Good evening and welcome to the latest edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Haig, and the Hudson County Sports Podcast is brought to you once again by the great people down at Stan Sports Center, located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken, and the telephone number there is 201-798-4466. And with me as a, as incredibly special guests, and yes, this is a, a once in a year and a half of doing the podcast history. We have more than one person on the line. As a matter of fact, we've got four people on the line, and oh yeah, they all happen to be brothers. And it's the first family of Hoboken Athletics, at least it has been over the last 40 years of me covering Hoboken. And we have, I'm going to guess in age order. Ready? Uh, I'm going to sing Eddie is the oldest. Eddie, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Then I'm going to guess that Tony is next. Uh, oh, Ralph is next. Okay, so it's Ralph, then Tony, then then Michael. Okay, all right, I apologize. So then we have Ralph, the second, and by now hopefully you're guessing who the, who the guests are today. Then we have Ralph, then we have Tony, and finally we have Michael, and all four, they are the Eusebio brothers of Hoboken, who all four of them had legendary careers in their respective sports uh, during their days in the late 80s and, uh, I guess, the late 90s. I mean, so for over a full decade, we had at least one of the four Eusebio brothers doing something great on, uh, in athletics. And how fitting is it that we have the Eusebio brothers on and we start the day by announcing that Stans is the uh, – is the sponsor, and I would imagine all four of you guys have spent just a, a few minutes in stands. What do you think, right? Who wants? Go ahead, Ralph. Do you speak first, or, or you want to, who wants to speak first? Who said absolutely? Wow. Okay. Who was who was that, Eddie? That talk? Yep, that was me. Okay. All right. Again, if you could just help me out by saying, "Yeah, Jim, this is so and so," because if not, I can't tell who's who. All right. So, but so Eddie, you had a baseball glove then, huh? You played baseball a little bit. I, I, I had a very short baseball career. Okay. Okay, see? Little did we know. All right. So let's start with you, Eddie. And and um, and how old were you when you started playing all the sports that you did? You said soccer and ba and, and basketball. Uh, uh, how old were you when you first started playing? Wow. Um, <laughs> we're going back. Uh, I started playing soccer when I was about two years old. Right. But uh, we, we started off playing soccer, and then uh, we, uh, you know, we, I was introduced to playing uh, Little League uh, at a tryout when I was 11 years old. I played for the Powerhouse Troy. We, uh, we won when I was 11, we won when I was 12. Um, and then I went on to play Babe Ruth. Um, so your baseball career it was a long baseball career. Well, they play pro ball. It's a little different. <laughs> I continued 
playing basketball, and for me, it was just it was just it was just a, a, a passion of, 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 of competition and, uh, and just 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 excelling at the sport that uh, that I learned how to play. And, and, and Eddie, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you also play soccer as well? Yeah, and you were pretty good at soccer players, weren't you? All throughout high school, I played soccer. You know, we actually, uh, my high school team, we were the first team to beat the number one team in the state, which at that time was Bayonne. Wow. I scored the only goal against an amazing team that Bayonne had. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no question. All right. So then all of a sudden, along comes Ralph. And how many years difference is there between Eddie and Ralph? Good, Ralph. How are you, buddy? How many years? How many? How many years difference is there between you and Eddie? One year difference. One year difference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you. How much was he an influence to you to to make you want to play sports too? Did you say, okay, he's going, I want to go? That's the reason that I, played, I started playing baseball and, and even soccer. Um, he had a competitive Okay. Now, Ralph, let me ask you, and I, didn't, I forgot to ask Eddie, were you guys all born here in the United States? Yes, of course, yeah. Okay. So you just got a late start on playing baseball. You, you know, Hoboken usually they start playing at age seven. You guys didn't play till 10. Was there a reason? Okay. All right. I take so I take it back. All right. So uh, just to, so then once you got into little league, they weren't going to let you out, right? None of his, right? Because you were so good. Anybody want to answer that? Okay. All right. So then, uh, Tony, how much? How many years younger are you than Ralph? Hey, Tim, how's it going? This is Tony. Um, I'm, I'm just also one year apart, of, you know, from Ralph. Boy, oh boy, your parents worked hard, huh? <laughs> So you guys are almost like triplets then, Tony, right? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Um, yeah, so basically, I mean, I got started a little younger than, you know, those guys. Um, my dad was playing baseball at the time. Uh, and then I got Oh, that must have been cool.
and how to get him, you know, you know, some, you know, that ball back. So I just don't know pretty much every sport, including tennis. You know, at one point. Really? Com competitively, Tony? Competitively, you were playing or just just fooling around with your friends? Okay, wow. <laughs> that might be a collector's item, Tom. That might be a collector's item. Okay. There you go. All right, now, uh, Mike, how much younger are you than Tony? Five years. There you go. Well, oh, so you're part of history. You play for the Young Dems, the most most historic team in in Hoboken. Wow, so so you all four years played on different little league teams in in Hoboken? That's pretty that's amazing to have that happen, right? That doesn't happen nowadays. Of course, so you're gonna get a chance to strike them out, right? Oh, uh, what team? The one that takes the one that takes championship, the basketball team. Was on your Eddie was on. Are you talking? This is Eddie talking basketball. Oh, little league. Oh, okay. So what? So was what? Eight years old. What was he? Eight then? Nine? Go ahead, Joe. And, and Lindor just tied the game in the bottom of the seventh inning with two outs. So there we go. All right. Go ahead. Happy Mets fans. Yeah, happy Mets fans. All right. I just figured I had to. I figured I had to throw that up. I, I interrupted everything. All right, so so uh, Ralph, getting back to that. So Danny Ortiz was eight years old as a little league teammate of you guys. Okay. And was he was he pitching already? Yes. And how good of a pitcher was he at nine? Well, okay, that says a lot. So, all right. So now, oh yeah, I I would say so. All right. Now, 
let's go, let's go back. We're gonna go backward to forward this time. Okay, like you know, we're gonna do it like a, a fantasy base, a fantasy football draft. So we started off oldest to youngest. Now we're gonna start youngest to oldest. Michael, um, did you feel any pressure at all growing up as being the fourth Eusebio brother and having to live up to the incredible standards that were set by your brothers? And Eddie already just let us know that he's number one, right? <laughs> That's what he said, right, Ralph? We, we, when I talked to him, that he was going to bring it up ten minutes in. Ten minutes in. All right. Anyway, Michael, go ahead. Go back to go. All right. I'm, okay, Eddie. Yeah, but absolutely, they, they may be facts, but there's only one person in the world that knows it, whether or not it is a fact, and that guy's name is Eddie Eusebio. Now, you said Eusebio. You said Eusebio. Is it Eusebio or Eusebio? Eusebio, right? You said, Eddie, you said, you said Eusebio. Uh-uh. Okay. I mean, I don't want to, I just had, I just had Joe... Um, the, the former St. Peter's Prep baseball coach, Joe Irvin Ulrich, on, on with the podcast, who I've known for 40 some odd years, and I always thought he was Urbanovich, but no, it's Irvin Ulrich, and now I gotta, every time I refer to him, he's always gonna be Urban Ulrich, so I wanna make sure. I've said Eusebio for 40 some odd years, I wanna make sure I'm saying the name right. That's all. Right? Eusebio? Okay. That that's all. Ralph, I know you're the voice of reason. I can, I can count on you. So, anyway. All right, going back. Going back from uh, uh, youngest, to now youngest to oldest. Hey, Tony, was there any pressure on you growing up, although you, you're so close in age to the other two, but to play the same sports that they did? Was, so, was there an idea like, okay, you played soccer like Eddie did, you played baseball like, like, like like Ralph did, was there any pressure at all that you felt being a younger Eusebio brother? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's good to know because it's not, it, it I I don't know how easy it could be being the third of four Eusebio brothers and and the, the the incredible litany of success that you guys had. So. Um, Okay. All right, Ralph. Now you're gonna you're gonna pick up you're gonna pick up. Go ahead, Mike. It was more fun.
Wow. Hey, Mike, that's a great answer. Tell me, did you ever give me great answers like that when I was interviewing you all those years? Oh, my gosh. That, you know, hey, you, you, you grown up good. So, all right. Hey, hey Ralph. Talk. That's true. That's, that's true. All right. So now, hey, Ralph, talk a little bit about the idea of success level and and how were you able obviously you became better in baseball than you did the other sports was it tough for you to recognize what your pro, you know your your number one priority sport was going to be as a, and then leave the other ones behind as you got older go ahead Okay. Did you know at that point, Ralph, uh, as a sophomore, I mean, obviously you weren't going to grow anymore, so that was going to play against you in terms of being a basketball player, but more importantly, did you know at that time that baseball could be your future? Did you know it at that point? Did you have a sense that you were getting pretty good at it? Well, okay. And what what year did you graduate high school? Ninety uh, two. Ninety two. Okay. So who was so was Dan, was that your Danny Ortiz was your senior year? You the two years together, or he already graduated? Danny Ortiz graduated in ninety one. Okay. So who was the, who was the pitcher when you played? You won in ninety two. Alvaro. Oh, wow, Joey Anderson, okay. Yeah, I'll play Castro pitches a little bit. Um, so you really didn't have a dominant pitcher. That's probably one of the rare uh, the rare uh, uh, Hoboken State Championship teams that didn't have a dominant pitcher. Every single other one had a, had a dominant pitcher. Right, we had that. I'm actually here, right? We had pitches by committee. So they, they, they have formed, you know, the, the four or five guys Okay. All right, Eddie, going back to you. We've made the realm back and forth. Okay. When did you realize that basketball was going to be your ticket out and not one of the other sports? Do you expect anything else from me? I'm not going to throw you a lollipop there, Eddie, you know? Come on. Mm 
Wow, really? Okay. I, yeah, I think I was like around 14, 15 years old. And who did, who did you go to the who did you go to that camp with? Do you remember? Wasn't Derek Derek Olson? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Eric Strickland, he ended up playing uh, for Providence. Sure, from and the Boston Celtics. Yeah, he had a good career. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we had a handful of guys that, you know, um, a group from, uh, from, from Newark kind of like was around looking for talent. And uh, they found Derek and I, and they invited us to go down to North Carolina to Wow. Do you think do you think that's where you got exposed to, to be able to become a, a D Division One basketball player? I, I think so. And, and I mean, there was a promotion school going to different camps. Uh, I played at the Cedar camp. Uh, I never went to five star, only because they were kind of like a conference with other, other camps. But uh, playing, in, playing in Westport, uh, you know, Fort Street Park, played in New York. Um, I've met a lot of Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Eddie, I thought that this was a story I wrote about you a long, long time ago, that when you were 14 years old, correct me if I'm wrong, that you snuck away from Hoboken and went to go play in the Bronx with the Gauchos? Is that a true story, or is that, is that, is that, is that about somebody else? No, 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 that was true. I thought so, okay. And then nobody knew that you were 14, and more importantly, Sparta didn't know that you went over there to play, and because he would have had a car, he would have had a heart attack if he knew that you played, right? You know, you know, what, it, you know what it was, Jimmy? I would, I would go with folks because you know, 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 Right. Wow. And he never asked you how old you were. Never just put you on the team. You said you were on a team. I'll be darned. Yep. And then that, and that's how that jersey team formulated. I can't even remember the name of the, the team anymore, but, uh, you know, Jerry DeHue was part of it, you know, Bobby Hurley was part of it, um, and a couple of other Canadian players were part of it. Yep. Bob, Brian, Brian, Brian Mahoney, to, to, no, not Brian Mahoney, Brian Doherty sponsored that team. They were the Allen Hurst Farmers. Because of no Allen Hurst Barbers, Allen Hurst Barbers, they were, and that was the team that they all played AAU basketball for. All of them, Bobby, Terry, Jerry, you know, the whole lot. Yeah, and, and, and I remember, I remember Rodrick was trying to convince me to play for his team because he, uh, he was the Allen Hurst Barbers. Yeah. And I remember Rodrick was trying to convince me to play for his team because he, uh, he was the Allen Hurst Barbers. Right. That's where they were. All right. So anyway, so did, you obviously could not tell your parents. That you were 14 years old and getting into a car and driving to the Bronx with Harry Howie Dykeman, could you? <laughs> okay. Well, that's, you know what? It's just a, 
it's just as far away. <laughs> but 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 the idea I remember you telling me that story and then and then lo and behold I then asked Howie Dykeman one time, I said, You're, did you ever have a, a a kid from Hoboken on your team? He goes, he says, yeah, Eusebio. I said, you remember him? He goes, yeah, he was a he was a good player. I said, did you realize he was 14 playing for you? He goes, no. I said, yeah, no. I, just, I remember that story well. You know, is that funny how things stick in your head? Okay. Uh, all right, Eddie, go stay in with you, okay? Um, and this is the next round of qu questions before we take a break. Eddie, from from your standpoint, um, when did you start to realize that you were Division One? And who was the first school that came calling on you and made you a, an offer? Do you remember? Did he really? Wow. Yes, yeah, before, before he got fired. And then I went to touch school. And uh, that's what was pretty much the history. Uh, I, I pretty much allowed my mom and my dad to make the decision of where I went to school only because, you know, I, I owned it to them. And, and they, 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 were, they fell in love with the University of Hampshire. And the rest of it was, you know, pretty much history for me there. Um, I visited a bunch of schools, but I. Uh, My man, my, he was there with you? Jimmy Boylan was at New Hampshire with you? Oh, I had no idea. Isn't that funny? Okay. Right. Oh, so that wasn't Billy Harrigan. Didn't you play for Billy too as well? Oh, that's right. Okay, never mind. All right. So that's ter that's terrible that uh, that that you get uh, you sign your letter to go to New Hampshire and then they and then they fired Jimmy Boylan. That's terrible. Who was the Who was the guy who was the athletic director that became the head coach? Uh, Jim I don't know what idea that is. Wow. That's what it was. All right. That's 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 horrible, and it obviously it, it, it never helped you at all until moving forward. All right, now Ralph, we're going to get to you. When did you start to realize that you had professional uh, tendencies, and was it the did the father put that in your head early on, and you say, okay, I'm going to live up to what he says? Oh wow! Okay, Elizabeth head coach, legend. Yeah. Use use that term loosely. Use that term, buddy. Buddy and Mark Lukashevitz lose that. Use that loosely. Only kidding. He's a good. He's a good friend of mine too, as well. So. Okay. All right. So that was your junior year is when you first started. When when, when, it, when the college when when well you also had some college offers too. But did you did but 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 the pro scouts started to come around your junior your junior year. No, the pro the pros that come around they, they were around for Danny Orton. 
Oh, and and the Mets, and just to let you know, the Mets just won in eight innings. Don Smith with an RBI single scored Lindor. We won two to one. Great win. Great win. Okay, go ahead. That's right. Okay. Wow, okay. And you went, and that's what you ended up doing, too, right? Where'd you go to Juco? I went to Bavard. Bavard, that's right. Okay. All right. I remember, I remember that. All right. All right. Now let's go back to Tony. Tony, at, at, at this point right now in your career, did you have aspirations to play college, collegiately in any of the sports? I mean, more soccer, I guess, than baseball? After you, Tenex? Okay. 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 Not a bad thing to do is to, to admire your brothers, and we'll be back with uh, with. Um, with Michael's story as we continue on after this ad from one of your favorite places in the world, Stan Sports Center. With Stan Sports Center is your local full-service sporting goods vendor and authorized team dealer. They offer quality products and dozens of brands to outfit your team top to bottom. Stan has proudly been supporting the local community since 1946 and is your one-stop shop for uniforms, equipment, online team stores, and so much more. Locations in Hoboken and Saddlebrook and servicing the entire tri-state area, visit them on the web at stands, that stands plural, sports, that sports plural, ctr.com. Do that again, stands plural, sports plural, ctr.com. And check them out on social media for their latest creations. And if you go to Stan Sports Center and you tell my wonderful friend down at Stan's, either Danny or Lou or Todd, that you listen to the Hudson County Sports Podcast, and you want to buy anything in the store other than, say, Lou's glasses, uh, they'll give you a 10% discount on anything that's in the store. Anything retail, 10% discount. If you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast, not a bad deal. So, uh, and sh- make sure if you go down there that you listen to the podcast that included the Eusebio Brothers, which is a historic uh, day on the Hudson County Sports Podcast to have Five guests on the show for the price of one. Not bad. Not not bad in that respect. So, anyway, Stan Sports Center, located 528 Washington Street, Hoboken. Telephone number there is 201-798-4466. And we're back now with the four Eusebio brothers. And we're going to go start youngest to oldest again. And we're going to say, Michael, when did you start to realize that you possibly had uh, at least aspirations to play at the next level, but it turned out to be not the level that we all anticipated it to be, correct? I'm, I'm their biggest fan, so you know, and those guys, it's just 
Okay. All right. But I, the point I was trying to make is that uh, your junior and senior years in, at, in Hoboken, you were first, well, I, I don't know about junior year first team all state, but you were definitely a first team all state uh, in your senior year as a shortstop. And how much did it, did it, you, you have to? You, who would you ever thought that you you would become a professional pitcher? And, ha, and just real quickly, we'll get back to you to talk a little bit about that. But at that point in high school, you must have thought that you were going to college and going to college to be an infielder, correct? One hundred percent. Okay. Was there any school that was in particular that was recruiting you heavily back then that you thought about going? Was St. John's in the mix? Didn't 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 Blank Meyer really like you? Okay. Okay. Well, but you were still a shortstop, correct? At that point, a second baseman? That's right. You didn't pitch at all in Little League. I mean, in high school. Not an not inning. Not a pitch. Okay. Well, because that, that, at that point you went to some tryout, I think in the Meadowlands, right? Wasn't it Giant Stadium and you threw 90 through, 93? Something like, oh no, wait a minute, it was in Florida. Where was it that you had that, that showcase? You went to school in Georgia? Michael, you went to school in Georgia? What school in Georgia did you go to? What school in Georgia? Oh, okay. All right. I had no idea. Okay. Oh, how about that? Turn about is for fair play. So, all right. We'll get back to more of your pro career in a little bit. Tony, at this point, what were you thinking in terms of life? You went to you you went to FDU and Teaneck. Did you stay there for your all four years? Did you get your degree from there? Okay. Um, and then bounce around, you know, a little bit, you know, from different um, uh, odd jobs. 
Oh, good for you. Now, where is that? Where is Kanaka Minolta located? Where are you? In Wayne. Okay, so not too far. Not a bad commute, right? Oh, okay. All right. So now, Ralph, was there any thought at all about you going to college uh, during your senior year? Or was it going to have to be... Oh, no, wait a minute. You did go to Brevard right away from high, from high school, right? Okay. Was, was that with the thought in mind of because you didn't have the grades to go to a four-year school? Or was that the idea that you wanted to go someplace with the hope of maybe getting drafted in a year. What was the thought process? combination of both. So I was a B student, but my uh, SAT scores weren't, weren't good enough for uh, Division One. So I knew I didn't want to stay up north. I uh, Danny had gone to, Danny Orchard had gone to Brevard the year before me, with uh, Sean Figueroa, and I started uh, taking uh, the Florida area where to continue my uh, education and to play baseball in hopes to get signed. That's exactly how it worked out. Okay. Oh, so you weren't drafted? You signed free as a free agent? No, I was drafted out of Brevard. Oh, you drafted out of Brevard? I thought so. Okay. And you were drafted by the Cubs? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, and at that point, was there no thought process at all? Was Spa involved in the, in the, in the uh, negotiations? Oh my God! So did he say? Did he just put the contract in front of your face and say, "Here, sign this"? Or did he? Or, or, or was it a good battle? Okay. Okay. And there was no money involved at all. Just okay. Yeah, I'm going. Okay. All right. That's how much you just loved it, right? I loved it, but not only that, not too many kids get that opportunity. Right. Well, it just seemed to be that everybody from Hoboken was getting that opportunity one after another for there a little while. Oh, no, not so much. No, you were the only one. I think, oh, well, Casey got drafted, but he didn't sign. Figueroa had to go play independent ball first, so he didn't, I don't think he counts. I think you were the first, right? Pretty sure. Oh, Danny Ortiz got drafted by the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. Yep. As well, he should have been. <laughs> right? As well, he should have been drafted at high school. He was. That's how good he was. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, did you have any idea going into that draft? And what is that? The draft of what year? Ninety four, ninety five. 93, okay. Did you have any idea at that time, Ralph, that during going into that draft that you had a chance to become drafted? Or Yeah, okay. Yeah, because towards the end of my season with Bavard, uh, Mark Lucchesevich was also on that team. Okay. Ah, okay. And I ended up on the, yeah, number one with the Blue So there was scouts every day there watching him, even when he wasn't pitching. And it did you just well. Yeah. Well, and more, as we know, Mark Lucas Shepherds from Sea Caucus, who was also a, once a guest on this podcast, uh, was drafted uh, by the Toronto Blue Jays in what they called the auxiliary round or whatever. It was attached to the bottom of the first round, but he's technically a first round draft pick. Um, and he did with the Blue Jays and made it to the big leagues with Anaheim. Um, I'm trying to think, did he pitch for another team? Did he make it to the big leagues with the Blue Jays? I don't know. But he pitched in the big leagues for a couple of years. Just Anaheim. I, got, I know I got a video of him striking out A-Rod, which is just classic. He throws him the, he threw him the backdoor slider and struck him out swinging, and it was like, hello, there you go. He could use, too bad he can't use that as being like his, uh, his baseball card, just like here, flip this over and watch this. Yeah, so 
Anyway, good man, though. Good, good man, and a lot of fun to watch him play during his high school days. So, all right, so going into that draft, Ralph, you seriously, you thought you had a shot, and would, did you follow along? Uh, I mean, it must have been really hard to follow, no? Wow. All right, do you want to say what round you were drafted in? The 59th round. 59th round. That, see, there's something that's a distinction. We'll never see that again. We may never see five people on a, on, a, on, a, on a podcast call, and we'll never see somebody get drafted in the 59th round. So you have that distinction. So yeah, those, days are long, those days are long gone. Gone. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> Eddie, we've forgotten about you almost for a little bit there. Tell, tell us a little bit about what was it like to play uh, a, a kid from Hoboken, New Jersey, being in New Hampshire of all places and trying to play Division One basketball. <laughs> is it on the water? Yeah, it is. Oh, wow, okay. It is. So that must be beautiful right there. Good. Well, and you, and you had a, and you had a, you had a very good career there, and you you helped to put that program on the rise a little bit, right? If it was like I hate to say it wasn't great when you were there, but they started to get much better um, towards the end of your career, and then afterwards, right? Yeah, and you and you guys are all proof of that. There's no question. You were able to travel around, right? So, all right. Yeah, absolutely. And we, and we all, you know, we all, partially, we all managed to come back and live in the same state. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's that's amazing. And as a side note, uh, Michael, before we get into your career a little bit, tell me a little bit how did you get into basketball? Because you know, I know you've done it. You know, you've done it. 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 Not just with your brothers, but with your entire family. But more importantly, you know, you got three older brothers, and you, you, you guys are all seem like you're all th as thick as thieves. And is that uh, is, 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 was that very very helpful to you that you had so much support and so much love in your family, Mike? Yeah, um, people ask me all the time, like, so who's your best friend? I'm like, I have three of them. 
That's great. Tony, but Tony, talk a little bit about the competitiveness there is between you and your three brothers. And is that, uh, is that something that can't be even rivaled? That, that, you know, was there, I won't say fierce competitiveness, but was there competitiveness? Go ahead, Tony. I'm sorry. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Tell me. That's great. Tell me. It doesn't matter if there's a ball involved. We're playing. Okay. It doesn't really matter. We're going to play football. We're going to, you know, we're going to do something. Yeah, but you guys ain't getting any younger. You're not getting any younger. You know, so going out to play. I mean, there's a lot of injuries if you ask around. There's a lot of injuries amongst us. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, but the, the but Tony, you agree that the 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 closeness that you had with your three other brothers uh, helped? Did it help you get going along the way? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. From what high school? What high school did you go to? Yeah, my, my son was the high school at uh, Virginia County Tech. Oh, PCT. Okay. Jimmy, Jimmy Lentine, one of my best. Jimmy Lentine is one of the nicest people on the planet. And more than likely, he'll listen to this. So if I just now gave him a plug, Jimmy, see, there it was. It was for you. Do you know him, you, you know him from, uh, from PCT? Good man. Good baseball man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He uh he he's been he's he was there the baseball coach at PCT for about oh I'm gonna say about thirty years. So he's like the he's like an absolute legend at PCT. So that's great. What's your son, what's your son's name? Is he Tony too? No, Marcus. Marcus. I will I will have to go look up Marcus. What year in school is he? Robert. Oh, Robert Newtel's the coach. Okay. What year in school is your what 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 year in school is your son? What year in school is your son, Tony? Um, right now he's going into his junior year in um, college. Oh, going into his junior year of college? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. God bless. Boy, oh boy, I'm feeling old. All right. All right. So. Yep. Okay. With Rowan, they made it down to um, to the World Series down in Tennessee. So he took that trip with Rowan, and now he's getting ready to go to the university. Wow, that's a great school. But he's going back down to Florida. Not bad, though. He'll get the he'll get to play uh, probably about ninety games between the the fall into the winter and then the early spring. So he's probably going to you know if you're going to if you're a baseball player and all you want to do is play baseball, the best thing you do is to go to a school in Florida. There's no question. And I'm going to get grief from that. People are going to say, what are you doing telling my son and my kids to go to Florida? Trust me. It makes all the sense in the world if you get a chance. So. That's true. So, anyway. All right, let's talk. And, Michael, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, did you have any idea? Um, now, first of all, too, you didn't get drafted uh, by the big leagues, you signed as a free agent contract, right? Correct, correct. correct. Uh, okay. And what was it about the Reds that saw they saw in you in that workout? Did they say, you know, was it 
Was it the fact that you were topping out in 92, 93? Ninety-five! Ninety-five, somebody your size throwing ninety-five. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I was throwing basically my body weight. Yeah! <laughs> so, so basically, um, after, the, after the workout, before we even got to hit, the one thing that I knew I could do, uh, after I threw a long third base, you know, in the like, uh, workout, I got the phone call from Coach Matthews. I guess it was late on a Sunday night. He called me up. He goes, he says, he goes, well, you you called it. Mikey Eusebio is getting. Uh, he's going to be a pro baseball player. I said, oh, that's great. Where's he going? He goes, yeah, he's going to play for Cincinnati as a pitcher. I said, what? I couldn't believe it. Then I had to call you and get the whole load down. And it was, you know, when you think about somebody who you got in your mind, you know, you think of Danny Ortiz. He's a pitcher. You think of, I don't know, like later on, Kenny Rhoda, he's a pitcher. When you think of Mikey Sabio, he's, you know, he's quintessential middle infielder. You don't think he's going to be a pitcher. So, I mean, it, that was a very, very shocking thing. Right, and it, and then incre and then incredibly too. Um, oh, I, lo I lost my train of thought. Who who was it that the? Uh, oh, never mind. It'll come back to me. Uh, tr trust me, Michael. It'll come back. I had it in my head just then, and then it just flew out of my. It, that's one of the problems. I have all these holes in my head from taking foul balls off the head that you know, like I didn't that I realized. Oh, I just hit. Now I remember. They didn't assign you to like say rookie ball. Right? They put you, didn't you correct me if I'm wrong? Didn't you go right to double A? Um, well, yeah, when I went to spring training, I was with uh, Jose Ramirez. Yeah. And he was the first one to go to double A. Right. And, you know, they all looked at me like, okay, you're going to be a pitcher. I was, you know, I was scared. Because they didn't know what I was going to be. Right. And I was going to be a pitcher. Right, and they made you the closer, right? You were closer. Well, that's, a, that's an amazing story, how you became, and you were that close to being a major leaguer from somebody who was a little a little infielder. You know, like it's, it's, you know, like usually the guys who make it up the la ranks were pitchers their entire lives. You never pitched at all in high school, not an ounce. Because... Right. There you go. But who got a bigger signing bonus, Ralph or or or, uh, <laughs> or Michael? Yeah, because he was because he was drafted in the 59th round, so he got he got twenty seven dollars, and Michael, you got a dollar forty five and a bent token, right? Oh, oh, that's true. You well, you got to, you got to play. Okay, so now let's 
let's go into, into, into first of all, before Eddie, after um, after college was over, you had a chance to go play. Correct me if I'm wrong. In Central America to play basketball, or am I wrong in saying that? Okay. Okay. So you did get a chance to play a little pro ball, right? I hear you. So then, uh, did you now realize your basketball career was over? Did you want to stay in sports, or did you figure, okay, let me go out and get a real job and and uh, and work for a living? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So then, what did you what did you do for what are you doing for a living, real quick? Oh, you know what? Hold off, Eddie. Hold off on that. Hold off. Let me get. Let me go back to uh, Ralph and Michael's uh, pro pro careers. Okay. Ralph, where was the first where was the first place that the Cubs sent you and what was that like? Uh Ralph Stigler here, Jeff. I went right after getting drafted. I went to Mesa, Arizona, uh, where they were having uh, instructional, instructional league. league. Yeah, okay. Extended uh, spring training? Okay. Right. The, the first city was Huntington, West Virginia. Wow. And when you stepped off the plane and you started walking around Huntington, you realized that you were not in Hoboken anymore, right? Absolutely. Okay. I was, uh, I was far. <laughs> and you knew, you knew we were in trouble when the Denny's closed at 6.30 at night. And, uh, there, and the next Dominican person you had uh, with you was probably in Pennsylvania, two states over. You know, like you were, you were, uh, Lost without a without a compass, I would imagine, right? Yeah, you, you know, I was born and raised in the United States, but one of the things I missed was being around my family. Yeah. You know, and, and I was lucky enough to have a family that really supported me. Yeah, no, 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 with a, with a little side order of, of uh, Maduros. Oh, God, now I'm getting hungry. Okay. All right. So how long did you stay with the Cubs organization? Okay. So where did you go the second year? Second year, I got sent right back to Huntington and did make it out of there. That's where I got Um Did you feel like you got a fair chance, or did you feel like maybe the cards were up against you a little? That your higher draft picks, higher draft picks got a better chance to play. No, in my case, I, it, 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 everybody has a story, but uh, my particular story, the manager that we had in Huntington uh, wasn't well liked by the by the players, a former center fielder from the Phillies in the minor league. Didn't care much for outfielders, and uh, I did it my second year. I didn't see playing time I should have seen. Right. 
So, uh, how disappointed were you, or did you look to hook on with another organization, or play independent ball somewhere around here, or what was the thought? Oh, you did? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, when did it come into your mind that you said, okay, I could become a firefighter? And also a former Hoboken baseball player, right? Yep. And yeah. my uh, good friend Jason Gisette, the battalion chief, uh, he would ask me to take the test often. And uh, I had no interest in it. But one day, a uh, former fire chief, uh, John Gisette, uh-huh. uh, saw me in Hoboken and uh, suggested I take the test. Uh, and I did. And uh, a few years later, I was called. And God bless. See? And and Jason Cassessa is the first ever recipient of the Hudson Reporter Athlete of the Year Award way back in 19, ooh, I'm going to say 1992, which is not a, that's a long time ago. That's, that's not, 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 not chump change. So, okay. Michael, let's talk a little bit about your pro career real quick. And um, you were first sent to Dayton, Ohio. Is that where you were first sent? Or to, to, to talk about your uh, your your pro career? Right. And, and, uh, and it's called the league championship there, Michael. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> And, got, and you got no reason why you got released, right? No, they didn't tell you. You were th- you were pitching well. It wasn't like you were getting schlacked. What the hell happened there? You know? Uh, no, it was uh, in, in my case, they uh, they tried to trade me before they released me. Uh, it was mainly because of the numbers thing. Because one of the uh, my agent was uh, uh, right. Right. I was supposed to be at a certain level by that time. Sure. Um, and then um, after I got released, uh, I got put on with the work there. Uh, and it, that was when I knew that, uh, okay, pitching is hard because now I'm going to get a better player. And I think that love and that passion uh, went away because I wasn't playing my position. Okay. And who was your who was the manager of the Newark Bears then? Because I was doing official scoring, so I mean I don't. I, yeah, he was a former mid-leader, Harvey Potter guy. Not Bill Madlock, no, right? Madlock, yeah, Madlock, yeah. Bill Madlock, okay. Jose Lima was a blast to be on that team. Oh my God, God rest his soul. What a blast he was. Yeah. So. Once you get outside your comfort zone, you know, Hudson County and New Jersey and Northeast, and you get to go around 
All right. Now, from your standpoint, th th that year you spent it with the Bears. Um, how wild was that that you were able to play pro baseball, although it wasn't, you know, major league, but it still it was professional, and you're playing six miles away from your home, and you say, yourself, "Wow, this is, you know, you can't make this up. This is pretty good." And now you don't have to worry about trying to find where you're going to find your arroz con pollo because it's all over the place, including your own mother's pot. So, I mean. Uh, how much did it, how much and, and mind you too, as I remember, the Bears used to treat you as being, like say, a, a marquee person because you were from the area, and they would use you to go to like, you know, um, uh, what do you call personal appearance assignments and what have you. You went all over the place. So I mean, um, did, did you embrace the idea that you were, you know, from from Hoboken playing in Newark? Yeah, indep independent baseball is independent baseball without the, without the affiliation is very transient. They come and go. I don't know how many people you must have played with in that year at the Bears. I mean, we could go, we could look it up and count, but I'm going to say probably in the '60s, '70s. I mean, the door was always open. Everybody coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. So I mean, it was it was not not easy to go ahead. Right. Yeah, and that's really tough to play that way, isn't it? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, so you were so after your stay with the Bears, that's when you realized your pro career was over, or did you still try to give it a whirl? Okay. Now, any of you guys can talk about it, and uh, and whoever wants to chime in, just just identify yourself. Was coaching uh, a, an idea that you had when your career started to wane? Was this was there a part of you that wanted to coach? And anybody want to take that first? Go ahead, Ralph. All right, so did that, you know, encourage you to want to coach more, Ralph, or did it, you know, was that a, a, a you know, a, a deterrent to you to want to coach? What was it, what was going on? Okay, and we're going to get to that in a second. All right, any any thought at all of you wanted to coach? Well, you know, Jimmy and Mr. Debra I did coach. Uh, I didn't coach 
You did? Were well, you living up there? I was. I was. I, I lived in Albany. I lived in the Albany area for about 20, 20 more years, out, something like that. Wow. Is your wife from there? Okay. Okay, beautiful. All right. Um, Michael, same thing about you. Did you think about I know for a while there you were involved with the Hoboken baseball team. Are you? Was there part of you that wanted to coach too as well? So, right, and uh, was that the mindset that came about when you, when you and Michael opened the business? And uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what you had, which was very successful before the pandemic? Talk a little bit about the, what's it called, the Hudson Batting Center, right? Okay. Ralph, go ahead. Take it away. Yep.
Oh, okay. All right. So you still, you still, both of you are still involved. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, no question. And you've had some high-profile people that went down there, right, to to pay you guys a visit. Um, trying to think, who was the the, the most uh, the most impressive uh, uh, big leaguer that you had to come to visit at the center? Who was? Who, who, I saw pictures of you guys on Facebook. Who was it that uh, that came down to see you? Robinson Cano did right. It just hit you. Just hit me. Didn't Barry Larkin come and visit you too? Barry right. Okay, so that was, honestly, in the heat, in the height of it, you must have been having a lot of fun helping and watching the development of little kids become big time players. Right. Um, it was doing it was doing very, very well. I remember going there a couple of times and, and doing a couple of stories and obviously loved spending time with you guys. Okay. All right, we're gonna go uh, uh, oldest to, fur to youngest as we get to sign off and just say um, how old you are now, unfortunately, and married kids and where you're living and what are you doing. All right, so Eddie, we'll start with you. And how old are you now? You're going to make me feel ancient. Oh wow, that's great. Okay. And and what are your kids' names? My uh oldest son is named Benson and my Benson? You named your first kid his name is Benson? Benson. Oh Okay. Alright, and then what's your daughter's name? Okay. God bless. All right. All right. Uh, Ralph, we'll go to you. How uh, married kids or and where are you living? Obviously, I think you're living in Hoboken, but where? Uh, any married kids? Um, yeah. Uh, Jim, I have, I have three kids. Seven kids. Um, Forty-eight years old. I live in Jersey City Heights. Oh, you live in Jersey City. Okay. All right. Yeah. And how old are they? Oh my God! God bless.
Oh, wow. So you got, it's almost like the Brady Bunch in your house, huh? Packed out. All right. Well, and uh, and of course we've mentioned it, but you are now been a, a Hoboken firefighter for over twenty years, no? No, I'm uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. All right. That's not too bad. All right. Now we're gonna go to t Tony. T uh, how old are you now? And what are you doing with your life? Oh, God bless. Uh, yeah, married to my wife, uh, Amy Stadio. Um, have my son, who's 20 years old, uh, Marcus Stadio. Um, he's heading out to college soon. Um, I have my daughter, who's 11 years old, who lives at Stadio. And um, I've, been, I've been living in the Stadio area for about, I want to say, at least 20 plus years. Um, yeah, okay, and that Bloomingdale is right in Wayne. Bloomingdale is part of Wayne, correct? Right outside of Wayne. Yeah. There you go. All right. And then finally, Michael, saving the best for last. Okay. He's seventeen. Where does he where where does he go to school? He goes to Bayonne High School. Oh wow, well, okay. Yeah, he just graduated uh he's going into his senior year of high school, uh coming in Does it does it play baseball? Okay. Okay. Good for you. All right. Well, so we, so all told, what do we say? One, three. Is my bad math. This is my prep math coming out now. Seven. What do we have? Nine. You save your grandchildren. Eight, okay. See, I can't even count that high. See? But that's a good, that's an incredible legacy right there. Never mind four brothers. How about eight? How about eight? Uh, how about eight grandchildren? That's just outstanding. So, and, I could have, I could imagine. So, all right. Um, let's, I'm going to leave it to Eddie to speak for the entire family. Do you feel, do you feel like you guys were blessed in the fact that A, to be part of the same family? And B, to have such an incredible athletic career, um, all four of you from, from the same family. And uh, do you feel blessed for that? Eddie, did I lose you? All right, we lost Eddie. All right, Tony, you're going to speak for, the, for that. Do you, hear that do you hear that question? You need me to repeat it.
Okay. And does he play someplace? Oh, you mentioned him before. Duh. Okay. I am so sorry. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. If he's as good enough into as an interview of the rest of you, Sabios, that be that, that'll be phenomenal. So, hey, all right. Well, really? Wow, that's that's great to know. All right, so I'm gonna have to look up Marcus Eusebio. There's no question. I'm gonna, as a matter of fact, after I'm done recording, I'm gonna go look it up right now. See, and go see how he is, and make us all proud. So. Yes. Oh God, yes. Now that now that we've washed. We've washed the stench and the disgustingness of of uh, Frederick Wilpon and his little boy Jeffy out of our mouths and spit it out. Um, I think I think the Mets will be back. Um, yeah, they got to stay healthy. I can't comprehend the injuries they've had this year, but imagine if they were healthy with the pitching staff that they have. It'd be you know incredible. You know so. Yeah, I think they're gonna win. I could win, win, win another World Series, you know. So, and I would imagine there's at least two of you guys that are, that agree with me. Can't say you do, Eddie, but I'm gonna say others agree with me. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. All right. All right. So, but any. I agree. I think, you know, it, it, it's not easy to make sure that, you know, you ask for, you ask for four interviews and you may lucky if you get two. To go four for four is pretty impressive. And I, uh, you know, I'm, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, encouraging to know that how, that's how close you guys are all are. So uh, anyway, now, Eddie, the question I wanted to ask you and you didn't hear it, but now I'm going to ask you now that you're back. How fortunate do you feel to have a life and a career, um, and the begin and the beginnings of it, the humble beginnings of it, all began in sports. Well, Rob, thank you. Those are very, very kind words, and it was it was absolutely my pleasure to watch you guys play. 
uh, growing up, uh, just, you know, it always, it always seemed to be, no matter how many times I would go, there'd be uh, some Eusebio on some field somewhere, but at least I knew I could spell the last name, and that was the most important thing in my business. Make sure you spell last names right. There's no question. And make sure you can get to experience what a kid is like. You know, you don't want to get a kid that's going to come up to you and say, yeah, no, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah. You want to get somebody who's got a little bit of personality, they can open up, and, and there's no question, never had to worry about personality when it comes to the Eusebios. So, hey, guys, I didn't know how this was going to turn out. It turned out to be outstanding, and it, and now I know that I can get more than one person on, uh, on a call uh, at the same time. So, you guys... Uh, Definitely were uh, well trailblazers here on the Hudson County Sports Podcast. So I appreciate all of you. So and in in order, I will say thank you to Eddie Eusebio, to Ralph Eusebio, to Tony Eusebio, and to Mike Eusebio for spending this uh, hour and fifty minutes trip down memory lane between the four of you. So, but thanks so very very much for being on the podcast, and we will obviously keep in touch. So thank you guys. All right, we will be in touch. And that was my special guest tonight, was the Eusebio family of Hoboken. Oh, yes, all of them were here today with me. You had Eddie and Ralph and Tony and Michael, all four in an, in a historic moment, having all four on the Hudson County Sports Podcast together at the same time. So, um, I'd like to thank... My executive producer, Johnny Haig, without him, none of this would have ever taken place. We really are getting, you know, into broader horizons by having f uh, three guests on at the same time. Um, so, but we're uh, doing okay. And uh, uh, we will be back with Nick with another. Oh, just wanted to thank, once again, I, I apologize for not mentioning, but the Hudson County Sports Podcast is brought to you by the wonderful people at Stan Sports Center. Located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. And uh, the telephone number there is 201-798-4466. And don't forget, if you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast with the people down at Stands, you should get a 10% discount of all uh, retail items that are in the store, uh, meaning their MLB and their NFL and NBA stuff. And they got a lot of that there. So take a, take a trip to Stands. Mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast. Mention the Eusebio Brothers um, and uh, get 10% off, off your good disc. Not a bad deal. Anyway, thank you very, very much for listening to the Hudson County Sports Podcast tonight. I'm your host, Jim Haig. Have a pleasant evening.